Hey guys, welcome back to Rossoneri TV. I'm Gio and I'm here for the match review of AC Milan against Crotone. Match that finished 2-1 for the Rossoneri. The goals scored by Pasalic and Lapadula for Milan, while Falcinelli scored the long goal for Crotone. A match in which was supposed to be uh, an easier task than what we experienced today. Uh, really left it until the dying moments in the match where Lapadula once again was the savior to rescue this result from Milan and give them the three points. Uh, similar to what we've seen against Palermo, really, uh, once again, Lapadula coming in clutch at the right moment uh, to avoid damage. Now, let's speak about this match, guys, because like I mentioned in the match preview, Crotone wasn't going to be uh, a walkover team. It wasn't going to be as simple as it looked. And once again, we encountered many, many, many difficulties. And I cannot stress it enough how many times we were in trouble today against the bottom of the table Crotone, which is kind of embarrassing to say. Uh, once again, I saw glimpses of uh, what we could have expected last season when we were playing teams like Frosinone, uh, teams like that in which we were always having trouble to either generate an attack or just always find ourselves in some sort of confusion when it came to the moment where we needed to realize our chances. Now, um, Obviously, today, Bonaventura was missing, and I thought that um, his absence from the team was pretty uh, evident, especially on the left side. Uh, completely terrible from the left side of our team today, including uh, De Chillo, uh, Jose Sosa, and uh, Mbayen Yang. Really, none of them could um, generate anything from that left side. Many times, lots of confusion, like I mentioned before. Uh, not being able to generate any proper chances. Uh, just all, in all, it was horrible, awful to watch. Uh, Jose Sosa there in that midfield, I don't know what he's expecting to achieve uh, under Montella, but he's definitely not, not going to be getting many more chances if he keeps uh, performing like this. You know, you're playing against Crotone, no discredit to them, obviously. Uh, they're still a professional side, but this is definitely the type of match which you want to walk into and uh, perform to your best because this is an opportunity for you to show the coach that you're a valuable player, a valuable asset, maybe even coming off the bench in future matches. But what did Jose Sosa do today? Absolutely shit all. Uh, embarrassing performance, much like Niang, which once again was spending more time on the ground than on his feet. And uh, to speak about the penalty incident in which Lapadula once again, um, he was fouled. Why did Niang even step up to take that shot? Why is he getting the role ahead of Lapadula or Suso, which are to me two way better shooters, in my opinion, than Niang? Um, terrible shot on that penalty shot. Really, his mind wasn't there today, uh, Niang. Uh, I'm expecting better from him, not the type of performance that you're hoping for from Niang. And uh, this, once again, suggests to Montella that maybe he's not ready to get a starting position to this team. Maybe he doesn't deserve a starting position in this team. When Bonaventura was playing on that wing, we got far better results. And Niang is inconsistent as it comes. He gets one good game out of five. Um, you know... He's capable of doing much, much better, and that is why it kind of pisses me off to see uh, Niang performing like this. Very frustrating to watch. Um, near the end of the match, where he was subbed off for Onda, you know, he didn't get it. He didn't get it his way. He fell to the ground and started beating the ground. Not the type of attitude you want to see from a player at Milan. Uh, once again, he was very frustrated. Maybe not the best of his matches. But in the recent past, we witnessed way too many matches from Niang like this. And uh, personally, I cannot watch Niang play like this. I was very frustrated to wake up and witness this type of performance from him where he thinks he's a god or something. I don't know what he does. But, um, you know, this is not what I want to see from Niang. Uh, other than that, you know, De Chio at fault on the first goal. Uh, another player that has been given many chances this season, but has yet to show that he deserves to get a chance in that starting 11. Uh, you know, you can't make mistakes like that against a team like Crotone. Uh, 
especially considering the fact that you're supposed to be superior to them and you're still getting beaten in a very easy way like the Shio was beaten today completely unmarking his opponent very weak in terms of physique uh, and just inexistent there when he needed to uh, be there in the right moments this crossing was poor but no surprise there uh, just once again awful from the entire left side um, the same cannot really be said about the right. Uh, Pasalic came out strong with a big goal there um, in that first half. Just moments away from the halftime whistle, he got the equalizer goal, which I was very happy about. Uh, it's not like Pasalic at the best of games, but once again, he came in clutch. And Montella giving him faith to actually start in matches is something that we want to see with these youngsters. So I'm happy that Pasalic got his goal, his first goal in the Milan shirt. Uh, really happy to see that he got that goal. Nice deflection by Paleta as well there. Uh, but, you know, the right side was technically a bit better. Um, also, Suso there, not the best performances from him, but was pretty much the only guy that tried clicking something into that attack. Um, lots of deeks, lots of moves. Uh, maybe didn't uh, make his chances any concrete, but, you know... Um, Suso still looks like one of the better players in that attack. Many times he doesn't get the support that he needs in terms of players uh, being there for him when he needs to pass. Other times he tries to run it too much on his own. Uh, but at this point, you know, he's probably the best player that we have in terms of uh, creating chances and making moves there. Uh, in terms of the defense, they really didn't have much to do in this game besides uh, letting in that goal. Uh, but other than that, you know, Still shaky at times. Um, I think they're really moving slow in terms of when we have to uh, move the ball up. Um, very slow in that uh, maneuver there. Um, you know, the midfield needs to do better as well to come and get the ball from the defense. But many times we're doing too many pass backs. And against a team like Crotona, you're not expecting that type of football, that type of culture. You want to dictate the game. We were keeping the possession, sure. But many times we're uselessly passing it back uh, really for no reason. When we needed to get goals and generate attacks, we opted for uh, the option to restart from the back. You know, uh, Milan needs to be better in that regard, especially from our fullbacks. And that is why I'm suggesting that Anthony Lee replaces De Shio from the next game. Uh, De Shio hasn't been doing well. Like I said, uh, Anthony Lee, I think, deserves to get a, a start. Maybe, uh, once again, a chance to prove himself in that starting 11. He hasn't been getting much playing time, and that is what maybe could be one of the reasons as to why Montella doesn't want to risk him just yet. Um, but definitely, I would start to slowly integrate him back into the starting 11, uh, in my opinion. Uh, as far as the substitutes go, uh, Onda, Luis Adriano, and Kuchka all came in. Onda and Luis Adriano didn't really have much of an impact in the little time that they played. Uh, however... Um, Kuchka did pick up a yellow, unfortunately, in those dying moments of the game, and that will make him miss the fixture against Roma. A uh, very crucial fixture and a very crucial player to miss that game. Not something that every Milan fan wanted. Uh, at the same time, you know, you could just see the frustration from Paleta there uh, when Kuchka got that yellow card. Everyone knew that he was going to be missing that match. So uh, not nice to see, you know, you just come in, pick up a yellow, and you will be missing such an important match like the one against Roma. Um, but there is one more player I wanted to speak about, and probably a lot of you are wondering uh, how we played. And I'm speaking about um, Locatelli. Not the best of games for him once again. I find he was very slow in distributing the ball today. Uh, many times he waited for the opponents to catch up to him, to get fouled and win a free kick, which I don't understand why. A big risk there in the end where Kushka was actually um, given the yellow card it was because of Locatelli. Sure, the distribution from Donnarumma should have been better. You're not really trying to uh, distribute the ball in the middle of the park there as a goalkeeper in those 90 minutes, uh, in those dying minutes there. But look at Daly, should know better. He should give the ball way faster. I find he's 
pretty slow at times to distribute that ball. As I said before, waiting for the opponents to catch up to him. Uh, look at Daly. I can't say that he had a good performance today. I think he was pretty much off his game in many different moments. Uh, but let me know what you guys thought about the match, guys. Uh, like I said, it was a frustrating match to watch uh, this early in the morning for us. Of course, us living in North America, especially on the East Coast, it was a 6.30 wake-up call uh, on the West Coast even earlier. So uh, frustrating match to watch. Happy that we won the match. Of course, Lapadula coming in clutch once again. Very vital three points but way too much sufferance against the bottom of the table team. Uh, this is not the type of Milan that we want to see there. And uh, once again, it looks like certain pieces in this team like Bonaventura are just so vital. And once again, it opens up discussion as to uh, what this Milan team could actually achieve when players of Bonaventura's caliber and importance go on to miss these types of games. So let me know your thoughts, comments, uh, whatever you want to speak about in the comments section below, guys. I will be answering for the next 10 minutes uh, your thoughts on this match. So go ahead and let me know what you guys thought there. Uh, Joe Sardina, Gio, you just ruined the game for me. Didn't realize the game was on so early. I'll watch the match anyway. At least we won, right? I'm sorry, Joe, but, uh, you know, the show must go on, as they say. Uh, need to do what is um, important for the channel and update the fans as soon as possible. Uh, so, yes, we did win, but in very um, weird circumstances. Personally, I think that we didn't deserve the win today. I think Crotone deserved much more than a loss. Uh, like we have seen against Palermo, same thing for me against Crotone. Games that we shouldn't have won, but we ended up winning. And this is very important, you know, we wouldn't have seen these types of uh, games where we would uh, score in the dying moments of the game to win uh, these types of matches. So very, very happy in that sense. Um, AC Milan made the game harder than what it was supposed to be for them. I think everyone other than Lapadula, Donnarumma, and Pasalic were off. Uh, very good observation. I mean, Donnarumma didn't have much to do this game. And he definitely cannot be at fault for that goal there. Uh, it was a big disattention from the defense. So Donnarumma didn't really have a say in whether he could have saved that shot or not there. But, uh, yeah, very good observation. I think besides Lapadula and Pasalic, uh, the two goal scorers, there weren't many praises to give around uh, for the other uh, players in this pitch. Um, who do you prefer in the Roma game, Lapadula or Baca? and Sosa Bertolacci if he's fit. Uh, I will definitely continue with Lapadula. Uh, as for Sosa and Bertolacci, not quite sure if Bertolacci will be brought on into that game, but uh, Jose Sosa could be given another shot. Also, Bonaventura might return, maybe. Uh, we're not quite sure yet. So um, if Bonaventura does return, he could definitely play in that midfield, and I would give Niang another shot. However, against uh, Roma, it is very... Um, you know, he needs to come up big. If he didn't come up big against Crotone, he definitely needs to show his worth against Roma, and those are very unlikely circumstances that we will encounter if uh, Niang actually gets a chance there. Um, can I talk about Milan Club Montreal's open letter? Uh, sure, I could give a brief rundown for those of you that still haven't read it. Uh, pretty much... Um, our president, Marcello, uh, decided to uh, write this open letter to uh, all the Milan fans around the world to show awareness uh, about certain decisions that uh, Rai, the Lega Serie A, and um, the culture in general are not uh, showing from uh, Milan here. Uh, so it's very important to um, you know note these problems that Milan is having. Uh, not only in terms of the team, but also in terms of the performance and um, the 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 TV, Milan TV, because it is a problem that we are not able to watch uh, games from outside of uh, Italy, um, and we are not able to watch the content really on the news um, and all these sort of things uh, from outside of Italy on their portal. So, you know, uh, hopefully we'll be given the chance to do so soon. 
Uh, but yeah, th that was just one of the arguments. Also, uh, there was another argument regarding the Super Cup. Uh, many teams, uh, sorry, many countries still don't know where it will be aired to watch on TV. So a lot of uh, this organization there from uh, Italy, uh, the Lega Serie A and Milan in general, that is what the letter was uh, speaking about in general. But I do suggest that you guys go read that. Uh, either on Milan News or other sources on Twitter, uh, retweeted that. You can also check it out on my Twitter if you want on Rossoneri TV. So uh, a lot of things to talk about there. I really suggest you guys take a look at that. Um, some other comments here. Uh, how long are we going to keep this up? We got out of jail free there. Uh, we need squad depth so that we have choices on the bench this winter. Transfer is crucial. Um, so, yeah. As I said before, you know, uh, it is very important that uh, uh, we need to, uh, you know, get those transfers done uh, because, you know, once again, you could just see the disappointment that certain players on this team have. Um, you know, we cannot just have players in this team playing for the sake of it. We need players that could get the job done. Uh, you know, so many times we get performances like we have seen today from Jose Sosa, you know, he's a player that we paid money for, but yet he cannot come into this team and uh, play like that, especially against Cotone. We need certainties. So how long can we keep this up for? I don't know, but we still have some pretty big games, such as the one against uh, Roma. We have the Super Coppa later on in this month against Juventus. We cannot um, continue to have such performances from these players that are meant to play better and you know when we don't have players in that starting 11 like Bonaventura we always seem to have difficulties and we cannot continue like this especially if we want to achieve Champions League positions if we want to even achieve Europa League how much more could we go for like this I simply don't know but I'm happy for now that we are getting the results uh, I'm happy that we are in second place still at the end of this week and uh, there's currently Roma against Lazio going on at the moment. So we'll definitely keep an eye out for that one uh, as we hope that uh, they both drop some points. A tie would be a, pre a preferable result between the two, but also if Roma lose, that would be nice as well. Um, can you see Baca and Lapadula both start in this team? Um, I don't know. You know, if um, Montella decides to change formation, sure. I don't know how both will be coping uh, together, but uh, I don't think that it is a real possibility at the moment. Um, once again, Lapadula is scoring goals. I think this was his fourth goal of the season so far. So um, definitely, definitely very good for Lapadula. He's definitely putting up the pressure on uh, Baca to come back and score goals when he does come back, if he does come back. And once again, this raises a big question there uh, for the January transfer window. Will Baca be sold or not? Um, all will be answered in due time, but as for now, I will continue with Lapadula. Uh, but once again, I don't think they will both be starting anytime soon. Uh, do you think we'll be able to buy players this transfer window? Well, Gagani did come out today and said that the January transfer window could be expected to look like uh, the one that we just did this summer. Uh, however, many of the decisions will once again be uh, done between Fininvest and Sino Europe, uh, meaning that they will both have their say in this transfer window. Uh, still, the closing date is set for December 13th. We still don't know exactly if uh, it will go down that day, but um, you know, near the end of January, February, uh, that is what many reports are saying. As for the moment, another reason as to why I'm avoiding further videos discussing about this matter is because we simply don't know what's going to be happening. And there's always conflicting reports on a daily basis. And, you know, I don't feel it's right to inform you guys about all these changes always going on with Milan, the new closing date and so forth. Uh, we cannot go on like this speaking about these dates. When something is concrete, when something is close to being finalized or is finalized, that is when we will inform you guys and we will do a nice live stream discussing about it. But as for now, you know, way too many inconsistencies in the reports from different sources. And this is not right to speak about uh, 
about disclosing dates on a consistent basis, different day today, different day tomorrow, cannot go on like this. Uh, RMVS Gaming, I saw that Milan are looking to buy Benassi and Belotti in January, will be very useful for us, but still far away from the window. Those will definitely be very good signings there, but at this moment, I don't think there are very uh, concrete and um, uh, signings that we can make for now. We'll see what happens, but I don't think Belotti is up for sale, especially in January. Um, yes, I did mention about Kuchka, Kuchka's uh, suspension. Uh, when will the chance for daily start? I'm uh, looking to start it in about two weeks from now. Uh, around there, maybe two, three weeks from now, for sure, we'll uh, once again be starting. Um, would you still buy another center back, although Paleta is playing well? Uh, definitely, I would do another center back for sure. Um, difficult to say if we could buy a new center back, which is better than Paleta or Romagnoli at the moment, and integrate them into the squad right away. And that is because Paleta and Romagnoli have done fairly well so far this season. Uh, so I don't know if it is right to buy a better defender and just stick them into the team already. You know, they kind of have to get used to the situation and so forth. Uh, but I am um, definitely for another uh, center back to come into the team. Uh, someone better than Gustavo Gomez, maybe, at least. Uh, we need definitely certainty. So once again, players that could, could come off the bench uh and bring certainty to the team at the same time you know there's a dilemma that if the player is good enough he doesn't want to be on the bench and just wait for his opportunity he wants to start games so definitely a lot to think about when making signings you need the right player you need a player that is willing to start on the bench but is good enough as well or simply, if he's better than Romagnoli and uh, Paleta, he could be integrated into the team right away. But that will take some time. So definitely lots of criteria to look at um, when uh, taking care of that. Uh, how much money do we have for January? We simply still don't know about that, okay? Uh, as I said before, there's lots of confusing reports, lots of conflicts. So when we know exactly what we are deemed for, what we are supposed to have, some uh, positive judgments, some actually concrete judgments. I don't like speaking about uh, possibilities, uh, chances that we might have to sign players. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Um, Gio, we need reinforcements in mids and defense. What is the budget of Milan? Does Silvio eat up the non-refundable 100 million? Once again, I don't feel like speaking about uh, budgets, uh, 100 million here and there. Yes, there is this clause of 100 million euros, uh, but still, you know, too many conflict reports. I just don't feel like speaking about anything of that sort. Once again, not because I don't want to uh, disinform you guys. I don't want to come out and say something that is not true. And... Uh, and then after, you know, I'm going to say, oh, sorry, it was something else. So I don't feel like speaking about that. When we have something concrete, I will mention it myself. Um, Miag's performance, I already talked about it. Maybe you just came in. But, uh, yeah, definitely awful. That is one word I could criticize uh, Nyang with today. Awful. Because I don't feel like saying any other words for Nyang. But uh, terrible, 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 terrible. Uh, would I prefer Antonelli to play against Roma if he's fully fit? Like I said before, Antonelli deserves a chance uh, to start in this lineup. Uh, Roma might not be exactly the type of match that I would want to start him with. Uh, but yeah, why not, actually? Uh, you know, De Shio has been very disappointing so far. Uh, not good enough. So yeah, why not give Antonelli a chance? Yeah, sure, why not? uh do we do i think we should give nyang more time or should he leave um i think nyang should be given a bit more time you know he actually wasn't that bad this season yes he's had pretty good bad matches but i think that um nyang should be given just a bit more time We'll see. I think we should wait until the end of the season to make a full conclusion, a full analysis on the player, and then decide where to go from there. Uh, 
Gio, where can I see the match with English commentary? It's so difficult to find. Uh, I don't know if you're speaking about the Milan match against Crotone. Uh, there are definitely streams out there. However, I'm not allowed to share any of them. Uh, so uh, there's definitely stuff out there, but it's hard to find sometimes. Uh, Gio, don't you remember how shit Bertolacci is? No chance to start against Roma. Yeah, I'm not giving him any chance to start. I don't think Bertolacci should be starting at all. Uh, so, you know, I think uh, we definitely will be starting someone else instead of Bertolacci. Niang is 50-50. Never know what Niang we will see. Yeah, you know, he might have a good match. He might have a bad match. Never know what to expect with that player. Uh... But yeah, what I saw today from Niang was just way too disappointing. Uh, falling on the ground several times. He was trying to take on three guys when he couldn't even take on one guy. Just unacceptable, really. I think he should stay away from his wannabe rapper career that he's showing so many times on Instagram. I don't know if you guys are following him there, but his Instagram stories are full with those raps. Definitely needs to stop that and focus on his game. Uh... Niang's best way to play is when he is applying mad pressure this game. He didn't do that. Maybe it was instructions from the coach. I don't think it was instructions from the coach. You know, Niang had many opportunities to do well. I think if you guys recall in the first half, he was onside. But b besides shooting the ball, uh, instead of shooting the ball, he decided to stop. And um, before the Crotone um, defender kicked it off for a corner, Oh, uh, thank God that we scored on that instance there. But still, uh, no, Niang was just bad today, really bad. I don't think it was any instructions from the coach on how he should have played this match. Uh, should Pasolic start after his goal? I think he will definitely get to start against Roma. That is for sure. Now that Kuchka uh, will be out for sure. I think Pasolic is one of those players that's certain to start uh, on the right side against Roma. Um, so I will probably see Pasolic on the right side, Locatelli in the middle, and if Bonaventura is fit to come back, then he should be starting on the left. Uh, other than that, if he doesn't have enough uh, uh, time to come back and recover from his injury, then we might have to see Jose Sosa again on the left, unless uh, Montella thinks of something else. Uh... A few more questions, guys, before I sign off. When is the Supercoppa match with Juve? That is on December 23rd. Um, do you think we will drop some points against Roma? <laughs> I mean, what kind of a question is that, really? Uh, Roma is definitely a good team. Will we drop points against them? There's a high possibility. Uh, but at the same time, I will probably settle with a tie against Roma, especially considering the fact that we are, are play, that we are playing against uh, Roma away from home. Um, Paleta, uh, you guys want a review from him? Well, Paleta did okay, uh, not bad. You know, it was his first match coming back after a few uh, matches that he missed. Um, so yeah, he did okay. Definitely not a bad game from him. As I said, the defense wasn't really tested that much. Should have done better on that first goal, especially from the Shio there. But other than that, um, you know, the defense really didn't have much to do in this game. Um, Salah being out against Milan is a big positive, but I think we would all accept one point. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, if we take one point from that match, I would definitely be happy with that result. Uh, yeah, Abate did have a decent game. I never said anything against Abate. Uh, he did okay. I think he was way better than Deshi, especially going forward. Uh, but once again, what I didn't like from Milan today is that uh, much on the em of the emphasis was on the left side rather than on the right side where we had Pasolic, Suso, and Abate, players that we could have obviously uh, used in this type of game. Instead, we went... A lot of times on the left side where Deshio, Niang, and Jose Sosa weren't able to make any chances whatsoever. Uh, what area do I think Milan should improve on in January and next summer? Uh, definitely the midfield. I mean, we do have some promising youngsters there, but Pasolic is not even one of our players. Locatelli, will he still be given a chance when Montolivo returns? Who knows? 
On the left side, Bonaventura might even play better as a winger, so maybe a left mid, a better left mid will be better um, for Milan going on to next year. Uh, what do I think about Donnarumma? Uh, couldn't have done really anything on uh, that goal today, like I mentioned before. Uh, his distribution needs to improve, but he came out big there in those dying moments to the uh, to catch a cross, and that is always great to see. However, he did make a big save there. I don't know if you guys recall that second half. And for a goalkeeper to make a save of that caliber uh, when you're cold and not really facing a lot of shots throughout the game it is difficult to do. So well done. He did well when he came out, uh, when he needed to come out and make the save. So uh, decent performance from Donnarumma. Cannot blame him on that goal there. Uh, should Calabria replace Abate? Calabria, we still don't know exactly when he's going to come back. The doctors don't even know. Uh, still waiting for certain... Um, um, still waiting for certain uh, aspects to see if he's able to come back or not. Uh, the doctors are not giving any signs or hints on his possible return. But uh, I don't know if he should be replacing Abate, but Calabria should be getting some... Uh, minutes in his legs uh, when he does come back uh, at least for the moment at least for the beginning if he does a lot better than uh, Abate then sure why not uh, our game against Bologna in the league is on the 22nd and then we have Juve on the 23rd how's that gonna work uh, Bologna game is definitely gonna be rescheduled uh, it's definitely gonna be uh, earlier that's for sure I'm actually gonna check that out for you if you want right now um the Bologna game is gonna be taking place on um actually well wait we have AC Milan Atalanta on the 17th and uh yeah the Bologna game is being rescheduled so it won't even be taking place uh in that round we'll probably be seeing it in the new year so the Bologna game is rescheduled it is postponed as well as the Juve game against uh, Crotone. That game also won't be taking place. So those games will be postponed in the new year. Uh, why is Bologna game postponed? Because there's a Supercoppa against Juventus on the 23rd. Uh, so that will be it, guys. Thank you all for watching this live stream. It was a relatively long live stream today. Uh, but yeah, Milan came in clutch, uh, especially in those dying moments with a nice goal from Lapadula. A bit lucky to get the win today, but uh, I think that um, at this time in the season, we need as many points as possible. So I'll take the win, of course, way better than a tie. Dropping points against Crotone would have been such a disappointment. So really happy that we got the win once again through Lapadula in the dying moments, just like the match against Palermo. Once again, guys, thank you all for watching. You can continue to leave your thoughts and comments on the match below in the comment section. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to Rossoneri TV to stay updated with everything going on at AC Milan. Many more videos coming up in the weeks ahead um, before the transfer window starts. So make sure to subscribe and not miss any videos. Thank you for watching. This has been Gio signing off, and as always, Forza Milan.